Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Hello and welcome to a time of excitement and inspiration. I am Manoj Sunny and together with Shalom World, we'll take you through the journeys of a group of ordinary people in the Jesus Youth Movement who dare to follow an extraordinary call as a part of the full-time volunteer project. A project that has been instilling the missionary lifestyle in young people for the last 28 years. A project that has put 28 batches of young people around 2000 so far through a 30-day intensive training and placing them in mission centers around the world for a whole year. And that's exactly why they are called God's crazy people. Today, we are blessed to have with us one of the pioneering members of the Jesus Youth Movement from Uganda and the first international full-timer from there. He attended the full-timers training in Thailand in 2015 and took a two-year commitment. He is a part of a beautiful family with five sisters and three brothers and presently pursuing his first-year philosophy studies in the major seminary in Gaba. Well, let's welcome Robert Kato from Fort Portal, Uganda. Robert, welcome. Thank you so much. Robert, you're one of the pioneers of the movement there. I think you got connected with Jesus Youth almost 10 years back and, like, and, 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 and you started a journey with the Lord from that moment onwards. How was it? Like, how did you start your life with the Lord through this movement? Jesus Youth came into Uganda in 2010. But I came to know about it through a training in 2011 when I was still in my high school. And in those days, I did not have that great thirst for the Lord. But through the few uh, trainings and the Jesus lifestyle, the prayer groups, the night vigils, I was, I was interested or I was somehow uh, enticed to join the movement. And I remember the family which was here, uh, Moses and family, it used to do extraordinary things with so much love. That love and compassion and grace they had for the Lord encouraged me to be part of the Jesus Youth Movement. I was searching for him and I, I found wonderful answers in the lifestyle of Jesus Youth in 2011. And up to today, I have never regretted. I'm enjoying the journey. What motivated you to give this two years to Jesus? It is not so common to take a two year break like this. But you decided to commit two years for the Lord. What motivated you? In 2015, the Jesus International planned to have a full time training in Uganda. And I did not want to miss out such an opportunity of having a training here in our own motherland in Uganda. At the same time, me and my family together, we decided that I should take a break from everything and have a moment of reflection. So I took this one year as a thanksgiving to the Lord for everything he had done for me. On the other hand, I also wanted to experience the mission in Uganda as a full-timer. Taking the second year commitment, it was as a result of seeing the need for the full-timers in Uganda and how they were building the mission here. So we decided to take up one more year to help the, the mission grow. And at the same time, full-timership training was a precious moment. We enjoyed it. And uh, when you reached Thailand for a month-long training, Everything was new. I think the training was also something very new for you. So how, how was your experience during the training? How did you survive in Thailand? Thailand was uh, a journey I did not expect. First of all, at the airport itself, I was stopped thinking I was a man from US. Unfortunately, I was from Uganda, a simple country. 
reaching Thailand, the food itself was hard for me. Uh, the climate, I'd not lived in AC room actually my whole life. It was indeed a very interesting situation and challenging time. But meeting the animators, the full-timers from different countries, the exposure training of, from South Asia, I indeed enjoy it. And one of the things that made me survive there were the, the retreat we had before the training. It made me bond with the full-timers, with my brothers whom I found there. And above all, I enjoyed the sports. The sports we did every evening gave me a refreshing moment. Thailand was the moment that I always reflect on up to today. I actually pray that I get a chance to go back. The interesting moment I experienced there was when we went for the evangelizing, the charisma part. Speaking a different language, people were not ready to listen to me, and we had to evangelize them, tell them about the Lord. It was such a, a challenging moment. But indeed, the Lord helped me come out, and that was the beginning of the journey I had as a full-timer in Uganda. Robert, before we continue, I have a surprise for you. Joining us now, Father Francis Xavier Kayonto, Father is serving as the parish priest in Holy Trinity Parish in Fort Portal Diocese. Father Francis. When he went to Casanarwell, where he did his uh, full-time ship, I bothered to visit him and uh, check on him, ask him how he's faring. He told me he was teaching catechism to the youth, parish youth ministry. Also, they had schools around the parish where he used to go and teach catechism. I was like, oh, couldn't this be a, like a little priest? The guy is mad with church work. So I was like, okay. I encouraged him. I said, carry on. After some time, they had already, I had already been transferred to work in the youth office. He told me, now, Father, it's very interesting to work with you. We have a program. I'm traveling with the cross. It's called Taste of Cross. We are not going to do the whole Taste of Cross, but he asked you to at least mobilize some youth where you are, and then you can come and pray together. It was like a totem when you arrived. We waited for him. He gathered the young people around the cathedral. And uh, late evening, I saw Robert coming in, carrying the cross. He instructed us through briefly how to go about the taste of cross. So we prayed together. Now, just imagine, at midnight, Robert tells me, you know what, Father? For me, this is my cross. I'm carrying it across the diocese. And I'm going to be having stopovers and pray in every parish. Whether it's only one person or two, I have to pray with them. So when it takes me two weeks or it takes a month, I want to carry this cross across the diocese and visit every parish praying all night, whether day, I don't mind. That have to be. I was like, Lord, maybe the gentleman wants to serve you in a more way, in a bigger way. So I was like, okay, you have my blessing. I prayed over him. I prayed for him. I wish him best. Off he left. Even after his full time ship, he came back to share with me how interesting it was, the work he did, his interactions with the priest more closely, because he was in another school, not in a seminary. He found it very encouraging and he gave me his dream. You know what, Father? Given a chance, I want to continue with the seminary formation. So I recommended him. They took him to the bishop. They took him to the vocations office. Then Robert started the real seminary formation. I'm very proud of Robert Cato. And I pray that he keeps up the zeal. And I pray for sure that this Jesus Youth Movement that has helped mentor him up may continue working with him until his dream comes out. Then together we can serve the Lord. Thank you, Father Francis. Uh, Robert, I'm more interested to know about your journey with the cross. You were moving from one parish to another. And I'm, I'm familiar with the, uh, the journeying of the cross before the World Youth Day. Was it something like that? What was the purpose of carrying the cross from parish to parish? And what was your experience? The Taser Cross was a project we had formulated to help youngsters reflect on the journey of the cross of the Lord during Lent season. And it wasn't an easy journey because it involved many stopovers. It involved a lot of uh, uh, crossing different towns. At the same time, it was quite expensive to travel around the country carrying a cross that many people thought it was a, a mystery. I remember when I was in a bus, I was sitting in front of in one of the seats next to, to a Pentecostal preacher, 
And when he started, he told me, you man, you are carrying a cross that is going to kill us. The man started preaching against the cross and actually asked me to leave the bus. If I'm carrying this cross, they are not ready to, to, to carry me in their bus. I stood by my cross and defended it. And towards the end of the journey, people were actually asking me my experience of the cross. So the Taze cross we, uh, we journeyed with was, uh, was supposed to lead a light to the youngsters about why the Lord died for us and how we can accompany him during his sufferings and pain. Especially, it helped me as a person, as Robert, to know, to carry all my struggles. It was almost like an, an intercessory prayer for the mission in Uganda. And thus, we saw so many fruits coming out of this journey. When you look back, uh, how this full timership experience over those two years, how it is helping you to live your life today? Full timership training was like a reformation. Like it was formatting my whole system to a new one. And it helped me understand the struggles of life, understand the struggles of a missionary, at the same time understand the price many people paid to make sure we know the Lord today. It formatted myself and helped me learn to be patient, helped me to pray more, helped me to love and serve others faithfully and patiently. At the same time, it opened me to a new vocation, and that is the call to priesthood. Uh, I just wanted to continue with that statement. How did you discern your vocation for priesthood? And why Jesus Youth Priesthood? You are studying to become a priest for the Jesus Youth Movement, and you are the first one to make that attempt from Uganda. So, why? Jesus Youth is a precious family, a family I've journeyed with for 10 years. They have loved me, cared for me, been everything for my life. And when I decided to become a priest, I never wanted to leave this family. And I saw the need and importance of priesthood in Uganda, especially in connection with the youth, the youngsters, the families, and the different projects the movement had here. So deciding to be a Jesus priest wasn't a decision that I took out of joy or out of so much love for the mission. But it's something that happened to me without even knowing. I found myself in love with the way the movement did its work, with the way the movement was calling youngsters to love the gift of vocation. And that's how I came to decide with a lot of prayer. So many people helped me to come, come to this decision. It was a decision I took on my own, but through the eldering, the pastoring of different priests, different Jesus youth leaders, different youngsters, different friends and family, different bishops. They helped me realize the need of the call to priesthood and especially the Jesus Youth Priesthood. And I am so happy today that I'm part of this family, part of this formation of Jesus Youth, especially in the seminary life. It is indeed a precious moment. You know that this is the first time in the history of Jesus Youth Movement we did a separate full-timers training only for Uganda. Uh, we were doing it for the last few years now. So when you look at the specific context of Uganda, how did this full-timers training benefit you? As a Ugandan, full-timership was a mystery because so many people wondered, why would I stop everything and be a full-timer? Especially in my own country, Uganda, some people would have loved to go to US or go to some beautiful country other than Uganda. But for me, I wanted to be a full-timer here in Uganda. So that when I share Jesus, especially to the youngsters, I will share with them how I've experienced it and how, as in the Ugandan context, how we can love and serve the Lord. And we Ugandans have indeed benefited from full membership training. We have, been, we have not only learned to love the Lord, we have learned many life, how to live properly, how to be good leaders, how to uh, grow in our career, how to serve in different capacities, both in the church and even in the normal world. Indeed, it has helped us to grow. So far now, we have had about maybe 50 youngsters being full-timers who had this going through the training and they have never looked back. It has changed them to the best. And me, myself, I have enjoyed the maximum out of full-time training. It has built me into the man that people look up today, not only as a youngster, but also as a leader, as a friend and as a brother. Robert, the two years you spent as a full-timer in your own country, I'm sure that it would have been very different uh, from the years you used to live there.
could you please share one or two memorable experiences of those years there was a parish priest i was with in the parish i was placed as a full timer he's called uh, father george he's from italy a very old priest and actually he encouraged me so much to be a priest to also join the seminary i remember one time we were traveling to kampala together in a, in, a, in his car and then he was driving and he told me robert i am growing old and i know at some point i will have to die but one thing i want to tell you is you have to serve the lord with all your heart especially serve the poor and love them to the maximum and even these words still up to today have become uh, like a, a, a journey light for my heart because the days i spent with this priest were some of the best days i could imagine a priest could live here in uganda they helped me never to go back never to look back but to keep moving forward to love the call to priesthood and at the same time to be ready to serve whenever i'm called to and at the same time as uh, those two years full timer we got so many blessings in my family my twin sister got married and she finished her school and she she became the epitome of so many youngsters in our country because in my own village on my own uh, family youngsters don't get married in church but through this two years full time I saw the lord without me knowing bringing so many missionaries encouraging my sister to get married in church which happened because of the grace of god and i believe it was because the lord has given me the grace to be a full time and after that i continue thanking him for the many many blessings i received though the challenges were there the lord made me patient and made me understand that he is the lord and he is the lord of everything and with him nothing is impossible and my final question to you what is the message you want to share with the youth of today we need youngsters who love the lord not just loving him in the name but who are ready to give him everything as the lord tells us in philippians 4:4 that we should always rejoice no matter what happens we should be happy so the lord is calling us that we as youngsters must be true catholics must rejoice in serving him and at the same time trust him fully and we shall see a new world built for the lord on the lord and for the lord your sharing has been so inspirational may the lord rain down his graces on you as you journey on with your formation to become a holy priest Thank you very much Robert. Amen. We are talking about a special call and we are all set to meet a special person who can shed more light on this journey. So here is a special guest for the day, a mother of four children who was the lay animator for full timers training in Thailand for the last 6 years and is school teacher by profession, small pious all the way from the sultanate of Oman. Small The youths from different backgrounds and different countries come for the training, and I always wonder how God works in them by seeing their support, their love, and care for each other. Once I remember, one more time I got sick, and he was admitted at the hospital. All the other full timers at the training, they took turn and fasted and prayed. for his speedy recovery that was something commendable from their part they're showing their love and concern for their fellow brother totally trusting in our lord's mercy another memorable experience i got is one full timer came to me before she left the place and asked me whether she could pray for me and also she requested me to share my prayer request to her she prayed for me though and i was like yeah the youths are praying for their elders they want to pray for everyone in their life who becomes a part of their life so in a way they start their mission the basic mission to pray for others from training itself the way they stress themselves is a beautiful expression of their love and passion for the lord they are ready to give their best to the lord even though sometimes the training is very hard 
and demanding too. One poor Taima who is very weak in speaking English and he wants to participate so badly in all the discussions and all the questionnaires and he lacks self-confidence only because he doesn't know English well. He came and shared this with me and all the other elders with the group, with the team. We encouraged him, we supported him and we can see the transformation in him. Day by day, he grew self-confidence in him and he became completely or he became an excellent soldier for our Christ later in his life who never hesitated to speak English. So that was also something I have learned in my life. Let nothing in my life be a barrier to serve my Lord. Thank you, Sumol, for the beautiful sharing. As you said, this life-changing training becomes effective not just because of a good team and experienced facilitators, but because of the participants too. Though they are from different parts of the world, speak different languages, live different cultures, slowly they become one community, one family, and that they start supporting and building each other. The whole atmosphere brings to mind the words of the psalmist. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. So if any one of you listening to me now is inspired to answer a similar call, do get in touch with us. So that's it for today, friends. Let's keep each other in prayer and stay crazy for God until we meet again next week for the same program on Shalom World. For more exciting contents, watch shalomworld.org and download the free apps of Shalom World on your iOS and Android devices. Thank you. To all of the viewers of Shalom TV throughout the world, I want to encourage you not only to support this amazing media apostolate, but to spread the word to others. We all know how the internet and mass media are polluting the world with the poison of pornography and so much other forms of materialism. This is the source of eternal life, the gospel, and Shalom TV is consecrated to spreading the word of Christ. Thank you.